Good evening everyone. So for people that have been following the channel for a while, you might recognize that I'm back at my cottage. I'm actually here only for two nights and then going back home and then heading back to Seattle. But while I'm here, I have a super nice starry night and I've been waiting for this moment for a few months. The second I wanted to test it out is actually that KNF reached out a few weeks ago and asked me if I was interested to review anything on their website. And I found these clear night filters. So I want to test them out and see if they're any good and if they actually cut out the light pollution. So let's get started with this right away. For those of you who are new to this channel, I'm Luke Ben Alford, a young photographer and filmmaker on a journey to become better at this side. So I'm going to go take some test shots right away before there's any clouds or things like that that start coming in because I've been waiting for this night for so long. It's been months. I've been looking for a perfect night to take some pictures. And then I'm going to talk about everything. So how to take these shots using your phone or the DSLR. Also, what is a clear night filter and why it is important? What is photo stacking and how you can do it and how you can edit your shots? So all of this is coming inside of the video. So this one is actually a pretty exciting one that I'm going to be sharing with you. Okay, so let's get ready for the test. first test shot here. So I have my tripod right here. And we're going to start with the DSLR right here so we can test out the clear night filter in our first test shot. So I'm just going to put this on. Okay, so now let's open up this box. So, okay, so if we open it right here, we should have right inside of here. Okay, so that's actually pretty nice. It's a brown protection case we have the protection case right on here I'm not sure if you can see but it's kind of a little bit purple so that's how it's going to be blocking out the light coming from the cities so we're just going to screw it on right here and now we're ready to test it out so I'm going to take my first test shot Okay, so I just got a few results of the clear night filter and it seems to be working pretty well. So if you look at the pictures we have right here, so I have the one here without the clear night filter and we can see that there's a lot of light in the top of the file or the picture. But then if you look at the picture taken with the clear night filter, you can see that dark parts of the top of the image are looking much better. So I'm just going to have to take much more shots. My hands are starting to freeze, so I'm going to have to stop filming this video and really concentrate on taking more shots to get a better idea. But the idea with a clear filter, if you haven't understood up to now, is actually just to make sure that you remove the light pollution inside of the sky. But the idea of these filters is not actually to remove all the light pollution. It's not possible, but it's to reduce it and make sure that the stars inside of the sky are a little bit crisper in these parts of the image, usually where you lose some definition and not make the yellows and things like that inside of the picture as bright and as intense when you have a light dome on top of a city. So this is actually a really useful filter, I think, for people that are taking pictures not too far from a city because it can really actually help making the picture look a little better and a little cleaner. It's around $100, so it's still a pretty expensive filter. Uh, and also, if you're wondering if it could work with your phone, it probably can. I think you could get the smaller version, so I think they have a 62 or 67 millimeter version. And you could buy a clip on filter for your phone and use it on your phone. I don't have that with me right now, so I cannot test it out and let you know if it's good or not. Uh, but it's definitely something possible if you wanted to take some even better pictures using your phone of the stars and then you're not too far from a city center or something like that where you have some light pollution. Okay, so I finally have my settings that I like in a composition that I like using my DSLR. So for this, we have our settings at 15 seconds f2.8 aperture and we have the focus on manual. So if you want to know all about these settings and why I chose them, I have another video that goes in depth. So definitely go check the link down below or click one of the links that is going to appear at the top here. And then what is very important to be able to do a photo stack is that we need to take multiple pictures of the exactly the same composition. So for this, you want to be using an intervalometer. Again, if you're not sure how to enable it, go see other of my videos because I have one that talks about how to do it using a DSLR. And I also have another one that talks about to do it with any cell phones. So go check those out. It's the same thing as if you're taking a time lapse or something like that at night. So it's the same idea. But for this, I'm actually going to be going inside of my menu here and I have an option built into my camera. So I'm going to go enable that and start taking the pictures and we should see in a few minutes uh, the results. We're not going to have the full photo stack, but at least we're going to have our 16 shots of 15 seconds each. Okay, so I finished taking the 16 shots using my DSLR. We're back inside and I already edited all the shots, but I want to start by talking about the results that we got using the natural night filter. This is the one that only worked 
on my DSLR, but the results are pretty impressive and I'm definitely gonna be wanting to buy an adapter to be able to put it on my Google 6 Pro to be, be able to take some even better shots at night. So if you come inside of Lightroom here, I've edited all the shots. Most of the edits are very simple here. So if you look at this right here, we're gonna see that I just do a few tweaks inside of the exposure. And then I go on the mask and I've used a new option here to select the sky automatically. And that's all I did inside of the edit and I punched in and added some clarity. So uh, these are the edits and I've cut and pasted the edits between the two images here. So the one right here where we do not have the filter and then the picture here where we have the filter. So when we look at the two results right here, so I'm gonna go in full screen so we can have a better view right here of the images. When I see that without the filter, we get a lot of light pollution in the background right here. But then when we look at the second picture here with the filter, we see we get rid of a lot of that light pollution in the background. So if you look at the second example right here, we're gonna see that in the background here, there's a lot of light pollution again. And if you look at the picture with the filter, we're gonna see that again, it's much cleaner and it gets rid of a lot of that light pollution in the background. So I have a few more examples afterwards. So again, this is the one I think without the filter. And then if we put the filter on again, everything disappears, all the light pollution and the bottom of the image here really disappears. So if we toggle between the two here, we can really see the difference between the two. One thing that's gonna happen is that because it's blocking all of the yellow light inside of the sky, it's actually gonna add a little bit more pink and it's gonna change the color temperature a little bit, uh, but it's not a huge deal here. So I actually did a test a little bit later on that night uh, by setting manually the color temperature to be sure that it stays the same. And we can see here that again, it does the same effect. So it really helps even when we have the color temperature set manually, it really helps and we can get pretty much the same colors in the end, but it's gonna be a little bit more blue, a little bit darker in the overall because it's cutting all that yellow light inside of the image. Now, if you look at other pictures here, if you don't believe me and you think I've edited something or something like that to trick the results, we're actually gonna look at two images here. These are the raw original pictures. I didn't do anything to them here. We can look at the editing. There's nothing applied inside of my edit. And when we toggle between the two, we're gonna see again, there's a pretty huge difference between the two. So if you look at the second image here, this is without the filter. We're gonna see that inside of the sky, there's a lot of uh, colors and it's just a little bit lighter and there's not as much separation between the stars. But when we toggle on the filter and we have the filter here, we can actually see that we see much better all the stars inside of the sky. So overall, it's really a filter I can recommend if you're using a DSLR and you wanna get some better pictures. And I really wanna get a smaller version so I can put it on my Google Pixel 6 and get some even better pictures using this. I did right here. And I didn't really expect to see such a difference either using a clear nights filter or photo stacking the images, but I'm definitely gonna be using both of these techniques in the future to get some better pictures of the stars because they can both really help to get some better pictures and sharper and better looking stars inside of your images. So I'm really looking forward to using this technique pretty soon in another video.